Oh wow, I'm so happy. The chairs, the office chair is so much better looking. Oh, hello folks! Welcome back, for I'm the one, the only, I am Hobo Tom! And I'm here to talk about some AEW wrestling. I think I accidentally put my Young Buck shirt in the wash. I, or, yeah, because I didn't get that. When did I get that last Wednesday? Or was it Thursday? I forget. Every day is just a blur. Like, literally, I posted in the friend over, so I'm like, only reason I know what day it is is because of what wrestling show's on. So I have, like, my concept of time is, like, Larry, wake up, go to work, nap, go to gym, do wrestling show. But, like, tomorrow it's work, grocery shop, gym, hobo. So if I him out of it, yeah, it's not this unique concoction I made in a great goose glass, but indeed. Mm, that's actually pretty good. I, I forgot how good Southern Comfort actually is. But no, I'm here to talk about AEW. But first, as always, as is my tradition, I have some people to thank. See here, Roy Fundal. Thank you, sir. You won twice because you got that six count. For Kosagan! Wait a second. As you can tell by my bookshelf there, my bookshelf there, I'm an avid reader. Lewis McMaster Bujold's one of my, or used to be one of my authors of choice, but then they stopped writing. You know, this the whole Vorka Sagan thing. The whole um, the Miles Vorka Sagan. Cordell's Pride was an amazing first book to read in the series. You, sir, a true master. OMG.
I thought you better write that down because I'll give you something else. You got an OMG moment. Does cover roll. Cover roll, you're making quite a sh impression here on the show. Because you, sir, you just told Jordan Grace she has a back. Oh my God. Becky, look at her butt. I like big butts and I cannot lie. And access point null, you sir are a master of the air guitar. And with that, all my thank yous are done. You know what? Before I talk about this AEW, I mean, for some reason, this, this AEW was, I don't know, this felt flat. It was weird. It means I needed this or something. It's not a good thing when you want to talk about your wrestling show. It's one thing when you are when you have mugs of Southern Comfort and Root Beer and you're, and you're cheering and you're going bonkers like I did for uh, Slammiversary. Although that wasn't Southern Comfort, that was like some um, cognac and root beer. Or if it's a red wine and pizza Friday, traditionally after red wine. No, this AEW, I'll tell you what. This AEW just seemed like a slog for some reason. I don't know. Impact's so much fun. WWE is what WWE is. <laughs> is, was, and always will be. AEW, I'm kind of afraid, is just becoming another wrestling show. So, but, I'm going to tranquil a little bit, because they still are relatively new. I do want to get this video done, preferably before 11, so I can get some sleep for a change. I have not been sleeping well. I know I have tests coming up, work, my cat has to go to the vet. I have to go to the eye doctor. I have to pay pay bills. To hope I still have a job. I have to see if my boss will let me work my other job. And I have like papers. I like have a paper to proofread. Whoa, am I busy or what? Let's talk about some AEW wrestling. AEW wrestling and start off with a ten man tag match. Um, the inner circle versus the best friends and f for what might as well have been Jurassic Express. And wow, did this match underwhelm. Um, that and they used Marco stunt as a weapon. So it was almost like five on six. Or probably as cover roll as, as Vorko Sagan said, well, it's Marco stunt. So it's five on five and a half. Um, the Inner Circle, again, start off. Orange Cassidy taking on Jake Hagar. That could have been good. Orange Cassidy was to, trying to do his sweet, shin, his sweet shin music. Yeah, and then everyone just got in the ring. Um, the Inner Circle tore like the ring apron apart for some reason. I don't know. It might have been me, but this was kind of a botchy show. Then Marco Stunt got involved. He got tossed around between Jake Hagar and Luchasaurus. Um, 
Yeah, then there was Orange Cassie in the middle. And it was a four-way hug? That sounds wrong. I shouldn't be talking about four-way hugs in pro wrestling. I can't wait. And I know I've said this, but I can't wait to, to hear Jim Cornette talk about this match. <laughs> That's going to be more entertaining than this match. Um, I call it the super hug. Sam, Sammy Guevara eventually gets in there. He goes to the top. Yeah, it's one versus five, Sammy. Not the smartest person. Um, then everyone kind of came in and, and they got some order. Poor ref Aubrey had like, was like, well, if you're going to do this, you're going I I don't know. Poor ref Aubrey. Why was she, she even there? I have no idea. They're burying her for the most part. And that's not good when you bury the ref. At least the WWE refs. I mean, you, you have Jack Daddy and Lil Nate. That's the only way you really know them by their looks. And, of course, there's Rough Jess. But they don't really have that outgoing personality. They're there as really the impartial official that calls it right down the middle. Uh, they've made Aubrey to be a little bit more assertive. And in this instance, she's just like, I don't know what to do. Um, Red Shoes... Over in New Japan, he does take control of his matches. But then again, he also knows when to tranquilo and step back. So, AEW's really trying to push all their talent. Doesn't You don't necessarily have to push everyone. Referee should just should be there. Your match, the, match for tonight, Aubrey Edwards. Little thing. Ready? Ring the bell. Five count, okay. You just do basic stuff. But then, of course, she wears her bright red lipstick. And I think she's actually commented, like, people people have been commenting about my bright red lipstick. So you have red lipstick. Oh, there's a wrestling match. Red lipstick versus red shoes. Indeed. Um, but, yes, yeah, so, anyway, so finally there was some order to some degree. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Chris Jericho versus Trent. Trent got beat up a lot. They did the heel stomp to Trent. Um, Santana and Ortiz, a double suplex on him. Sammy Callahan, Sammy, Sammy Guevara. I'm sorry, Sammy Callahan. Please, please don't hack me like you did um, Katie Forbes. But yeah, uh, Sammy Guevara and Lucia Soros is like, oh, that's a big mistake. He did hit the, G, he did hit the G, GTS. On poor Trent just got beat up. Then Matt Hardy showed up. I guess eventually Matt Hardy wants to drop his gimmicks and he just wants to have a good match. He wants to put over Sammy Callahan, Sammy Guevara. Why do I see? So let's say Sammy Callahan. Well, maybe because Sammy Callahan's the better of the two Sammys. Just putting it out there. Um, the best friends in Jurassic Express won. Um, wow, this was not good though. I don't know. Either I was just really tired or, or for some reason it seemed flat. There seemed to be, and again, the heat, humidity, all the COVID stuff, there's hurricanes coming. Um, the murder hornets, I guess, have left, but it just seemed flat. The crowd didn't seem as excited. As they normally did. I was yelling through it. I put together my nice new. Let's see if I can show you. My nice new, actually really comfy. I can't see most of it, but it's a nice back. Nice little open seat. It's nice and high too. Like this chair. Except for it's going to be probably worn a lot more. Because I know this chair is getting old too. And eventually I have to get a really good office chair. But, I don't know. This, this is just a can of soup. Then it's Caliber. It was reported that he used the N-word. Shame on you, Mix Caliber. Hey, don't get caught. 
I'm sure I've said it a few times. I've listen. I've already gone on rant and rave about what Hulk Hogan said. Yeah, Hulk Hogan is the eleven. Uh, Terry Boella is like the seven. You get it's so hard to separate those two personalities. You have this person who's used to being a larger than life personality. Get personal emotions involved. Um, I, I can look past what he said. I'm sure. I, th I think I know. I said it with an ex girlfriend because someone cut me off in really dangerous fashion playing loud rap music. And yes, they they, they were black. And and I said something I probably shouldn't have. Uh, my girlfriend looked shocked. She's like, "How can you say that?" Did you? He cut across four lanes of traffic, cut me off, and almost swerved into the grass median. He's a very bad word. I'm playing that loud rap music, and I think the I think the kicker was it was I actually remember the car color too. It was a metallic purple, like jacked up 24 inch rim like convertible like someone cut off the top of a buick and made it into a, a convertible it was a weird it, it, again it's it's one of those things that stands out and again that's why i mean the the ethnicity of the driver i'm like wait a second again three lanes of traffic a grass median Three other lanes up in Jacksonville. So so here I am puttering along. It's like, whoa. He almost took me out, took another person out. It took out people traveling in the opposite direction. Very bad. Of course, when I had my girlfriend there too, she was like, Absolutely. I don't know what terrified her more. The fact that we almost died in a car accident that day, or, or I used a very bad racial slur. Probably both. But then she knows I, then she found out I hate Canadians. So <laughs> that added a whole other dimension to our relationship. But enough about that. Then, um, so again, to the next match, which was War Horse. And I'm like, whoa, this is going to be cool. This guy's some Native American. And it's like four man's ultimate warrior. I don't think. Oh, I forget if ultimate warrior had any kids. I'll tell you what. This guy came out. He had like the black war paint on with red outline, which actually kind of looked like the ultimate warrior. He had the energy running around. <laughs> Again, he looked like he looked like skinny Ultimate Warrior. Yeah, Ultimate Warrior off the roids. Says, yeah, and I can say that too, because even though you don't know, you you, you kind of do know. Uh, he took on Cody Rhodes. Um, this was a pretty good match. Cody Rhodes gets very technical. You have a shake of hands. Eventually, Warho War Warhorse. Kicks out of a couple things. Uh, Cody gets frustrated. And Cody, again, he goes right. right. Let's see here. There were Chris crossing the ropes. Again, Warhorse, again, he runs the ropes exactly like the Ultimate Warrior did. He watched a lot of film. Credit to him. Not necessarily the person you want to be copying your wrestling style off of. So again, I think there were stories. Um, when the Honky Tonk Man was interviewed by someone, he talked about the ultimate warrior. He's like, dude, do I really have to work with him? It's like, well, if you want to keep it under five, it's like, I think he said, it's like, okay, well, we only keep a five in the match. And I think the long, the short part of a long story was the match before took a little too long. So Honky Tonk's like, you know what? This is going to be a two minute match. I'll go out there, do my thing. He's going to go out there, go bonkers, um, gorilla press me, s splash me, and then that's it. And it took, I think, like, probably with entrances, maybe five minutes. And that's with the Honky Tonk's entrance. The match itself was probably closer to, like, 
I want to say it was like 90 seconds or like a minute or something like that. You're going to have to watch that. And that's when he dropped the Entry Continental Belt to the Ultimate Warrior. That's why it's sitting back so far. There we go. That's a little bit better. So, again, the crisscross. Again, War, War Horse. I want to say Warrior. There's a big cross line. Um, Cody does some push ups and half bossing crab with a suplex. Uh, War Horse, he counters the figure four. Like, right away, he, he turns over. Uh, it was a drop kick, another clothesline. Again, these. Were all very warrior esque moves. Uh, he wanted to go to the top rope. Cody says, No, we're not doing any of that. Oh, he does the uh, Daniel Bryanson stops again. It's just so much of the ultimate warrior in him. Um, he Warhorse goes to the top rope, it takes a little too long. Cody rolls out instead. He hits the turtle stomp on him. And the macho elbow. Again, I like the fact that JR says that's a that's a Randy Macho Man Savage-esque elbow. However, Cole, Cody goes back to the figure four after a little back and forth. Cody Rhodes pick, picks up the win over War Horse. Ah, it was a good match. I mean, Cody Rhodes is Cody Rhodes is a cheeseburger match machine all day long. So yeah, no surprise, this was a cheeseburger match. And Matt Cordova came out. Zack Ryder, it's good to see you working again. And, and whoa, did he get cut? He definitely did not put on the COVID thirteen, COVID thirty. In fact, I think he put on like like the freaking muscle muscle man thirteen there. That was impressive. Uh, let's see here. Then um, in the back, there's a little promo. August twelfth is Tag Team Appreciation Day. FCR signed that. Uh, Hangman Ed and Page came in with a cheap bottle of liquor. That was so awesome. Hangman Ed and Page, sir, cheers to you. Then the next match was Hangman Ed and Page and Kenny Omega taking on the Dark Order. Whoa! The Dark Order come out first. Adam Page gets introduced. Uh, Kenny Omega's music hits, and Adam Page just goes right at the Dark Order. Hangman Adam Page gives like two Fs about his tag team partner, Kenny Omega, which is good. It's a really fast start. Uh, then, of course, Omega gets in the ring. Uh, Evil Uno begins to choke Kenny Omega, which is good. Um, I'm beginning to sour a little bit on Kenny Omega. He's becoming very much so that one-trick pony. So uh, the Dark Order, they make the quick tags, really work over each person. Page makes a hot tag to Omega eventually. Evil Uno hit hit a senton, which looked absolutely great. For a big guy, he lost some weight and he got some ups. Because he jumped right over that top rope. He had to put a knee on to help himself. I couldn't do that. That was pretty impressive. And uh, then the then Omega got monkey flipped into Page, who was like pro in the corner. Again, the tag team work by the Dark Order was really good. This was a really good, crisp tag team match. I don't even think that was about that Bashi. And they did great, great tandem work by the Dark Order. Then became a spot fest. I can't even make had the V trigger at the back of that, but no, it was a kick out. Then there was some like botched something. But then became the uh, buckshot trigger. Or whatever the last call, I think they call it. Hangman and Page and Kenny Omega retain their belts. But of course, also a commentary because there was no Excalibur. Uh, Cole Cabana was calling the match. Behind him was Anna J. Anna J looks hot, dude. She she looks she looks that that dirty hot in that mask, and it's like. Not even the full mask, it's just like the little eye thing. It's like that dirty, hot, nasty, I'm going to spank you look. I didn't say that either. So that's okay. Not my thing. I don't think I've, I've never struck a woman. I think every so often, I wouldn't even break my wrist when I would give my girlfriend a little, little tap on her bum. 
So again, I mean, if if you if like that's like if this is the hardest I've ever hit a woman on 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 her behind after pointing out very racy swimsuits to her. Yeah, I'm, I'm okay. Um. So yeah, uh, Brody Lee sends them out. Then of course you have all the creepers come out. Uh, FTR shows up. They toss the beer. And the Young Bucks are there. So this will be interesting. Tag Team Appreciation Day should be interesting. I mean, this is what AEW is known for. They're known for their tag team wrestling. So good. Good for them. Overall, it was a cheeseburger match. That was a Britt Baker segment. Um, Passing on notes before... Big Swole gets the fighter. Like, Britt Baker's going to choose Rebel to wrestle her. So, again, there's news about the women's tag team tournament going on. Yeah, that is what it is. Um, then the next match, we had Diamante take on Hikaru Shida. I thought this was going to be pretty good. This was pretty good. There was no handshake. Diamante It's like, pff, whatever. Shida... She is she has so many knee, her her knee strikes are amazing. I don't know what she learned in Japan, but whatever she learned from the likes of Shinsuke Nakamura, Asuka, uh, who else is nasty knees? Kenny Omega does some pretty nasty knees. Uh, Shibata, that's definitely nasty. Period. Um, who else is known for their knee strikes? Finn Balor. When he was Prince David over there. Again, a whole host of people. She has best looking knees. I mean, they look like they legit connect sometimes. And then they kind of just like fight it out. They both ground and pound each other. I'll tell you what. Whoa. You cheeky cameraman over there in AEW. I thought Kevin Dunn was bad. But (laughs) Camelto. I mean, Sheeta, she's so pretty and, and so feminine. Yeah. And Diamante, yeah. One day, we're going to see all of Diamante's address, if you know what I mean, down there. She has made some twerking videos in the past, I bet. Just YouTube Diamante twerking. I'm sure something has to come up. Now, Diamante. And she got draped over the bicycle rack. I'm not even going to call it the barricade because it's just flimsy. And again, the knees. And then Sheeta has a missile drop kick. They get back in the ring. The yay boos. Ouch, that knee. That, well, the one knee looked like it legit connected. Um, Diamante, then the, the t- chest slaps and the chops. Wheelbarrow cutter looks good. Then she tried like a Lucha Destroyer. And she effed up. That was the ugliest looking Lucha Destroyer. Either Hikaru Shida is too short, or Diamante is a little too heavy for Hikaru Shida to kind of jump up and spin. But I'll tell you what, it just like, it literally looked like she just like rolled over Shida and like rolled right into the ropes. That looked absolutely terrible though. And then there was the late Michinoku driver that looked great. That didn't pin Diamante. Oh, but the shiniest wizard did. That's an awesome combination. Hikaru Shida's good. It was a botchy match. It, it was one of the better matches from the women, though. It was a eh, ham sandwich. Then in the back, you have Nile Rose being interviewed. Um, who's her tag team partner going to be? Vicky Guerrero's with her. And Cameron! Whoa! Where did AEW dig her up from? I thought she was gone from, from wrestling, like, period. And then we have the next segment, um, MJF's State of Wrestling address. I don't know if this is to, like, mock presidents or mock the whole political thing in, in general, because it's just breaking down into what's gonna what's gonna happen. I, 
I fear is that it's just like the whole U.S. is just going to become the Wild West. I mean, I granted, I, I live in um in, in Broger Town here in Daytona Beach, but still, I think one of the things, <laughs> well, well, for a couple of reasons, I, I've always I, I do enjoy hunting with friends, and normally they would provide me a, a rifle or a shotgun, and I was never good at that. Um, when I do get my boat, eventually I do I I will need a gun. Again, I'm not having because I I go fishing like thirty anywhere from twenty to fifty miles offshore. I'm not having a hundred pound fish flop around my boot. No, it's, it's getting one shot through the eye, and that's the end of big, very big fish. Um, yeah, especially like if it's like a four foot cobia. Or one day, hopefully, 102 inch blue marlin. Yeah, yeah, one shot through the eye. That's 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 good night, Irene. So it's either going to be my 22 rifle or my 22 Beretta Neo six inch barrel, which looks like the duck hunt gun. So eventually, and, and that's going to be with with the supposed stimulus check, whether that happens or not. Who knows. It does make for interesting topics at work, though. Because, yeah, once people get stimulus checks, they like to buy shoes for some reason. Yeah, so MJF, oh, did he ever shoot hard on the WWE and John Moxley? Whoa. That's all I have to say about that. That's main event time because it was about 10 minutes left. Uh, Starks and Cage come out, they cut a promo. Then you have John Moxley and Darby Allen show up. Uh, start of the match, it's a tornado match. So it's all four men in the ring. So there really can't be a. Well, well kind of towards the end, but let's see here. It starts off. Uh, Mox tries to jump both Starks and Cage. He gets beat up for his efforts. Uh, Darby Allen eventually gets in with a missile drop kick. On Brian Cage, hits him with another drop kick. Uh, Stark gets in the ring. Stark looks amazing. St Ricky Stark looks like Mini Cage. He looks that good. Um, Stark's then got beat up by Allen into the corner, and that was really good. Uh, Moxley puts a sleeper on on Stark's, gets saved by Cage. Cage does this spot. He has John Moxley in a power slam. Darby Allen, like Larry, jumps onto Cage's shoulders, trying to do like a hurricanrana. But no, it's just like a power bomb, power slam combination. Cage is the machine. Again, he is the beast. And then it was a spot fest for everyone. Uh, Mox, John, listen, don't take anything. Don't sleep on John Moxley. He is a really good German suplex. And he uses the pile driver. Pile driver should just finish everyone. Although I can see why it wouldn't finish off Brian Cage. Uh, Moxley then got Alabama slammed into a trash can. And yeah, Ricky Starks has to learn how to catch stuff because he cannot catch the garbage can that Brian Cage found and threw from the ring. Again, that was some weird bosh. It just seemed like the timing was off. I don't know how much these men have worked together. That's for the really simple spots, the one-on-one -on -one spots. It was smooth, but when they try to do double teams, it again tossing the garbage can and missing it, looking bad, missing it too. Like, like he didn't even turn around, just like kind of like hit him. It's like, oh, what's this? Oh, and then he picks it up and kind of stares, like, oh yeah, I have to put this down here. So uh, it just didn't look smooth or right. Again, kind of boshy, but not. Not horrible though. Um, then Brian Cage got hit with a coffin drop and a DDT, and then so he's out. He's out of the picture, which I guess is a good way. If, if you're going to have the heels lose, you take out the really big guy by double team by using a double finisher on him. Even though I, even though people are saying, "Oh, paradigm shift," that just looked like a DDT coffin drop combo, which still looks great. But then Darby Allen got like this skateboard without wheels and trucks and like thumbtacks on it oh 
and he just jumped right onto Ricky Stark's back. I don't think... I know Ricky Starks was expecting it. There's one thing with expecting it. Another thing with it actually happening. I'll tell you what, that Thumbtack skateboard. Whoa, that tore poor Ricky Starks back to shreds. He was just bleeding. Man, they like to bleed here on AAW. Just like my boy Cooey Rose, because I am channeling the spirit of the American dream, baby. We need a little more blood and some juice. Although, what's that newfangled device called the skateboard? Only punks use skateboards. I'll tell you what, though. Actually, this was pretty decent. I told the story really quick, though. If you're going to have a grudge match as the main event, it really should last more than seven minutes. Um, I hate to do this, guys, but this is another ham sandwich match. And overall, you know what? I just felt like a ham sandwich show. I don't know. AEW is just becoming another wrestling show. And that's not necessarily a good thing because they could go... I mean, granted, I know they, they signed a multi-year deal with TNT and they're, they have the TV exposure. I mean, they could wind up going the way of like Pro Wrestling Guerrilla where like one or two bad things happen and they're done. Because just like with all this blowback and P, PWG is like nearly gone. Like they've been like talent rated. Chikara has been talent destroyed. Um, Ring of Honor's floating. I mean, they're like a couple of bad things away from being flushed, though. Impact's on the rise. Impact's competing with AEW now. Again, if Impact was on a bigger network, they'd be, probably be doing just as good or better than AEW. And that's it. I'm off tomorrow. So good feeling. Um, Friday's the last day I do a show. That's going to be my smack, my red wine pizza SmackDown review show. So I'd like to thank all you guys for watching. Um, have a good night. I'm going to see how comfy this chair is for my feet. See how good these wheels are. Oh, wow. That's smooth. Oh, that's so much better. It's nowhere near as freaking rickety either. That's... Oh. Oh, oh, yeah, baby. I'll see everyone Friday.